Previously on Miss Laquita. I am a work from home certified medical coder with three certifications from the AAPC. As you can see, it looks different over here. Put in a two weeks notice and I moved on from that company. Let's talk about what I do in my new position. My title is I cannot believe that I am doing a day in the life of a medical coda video because in the last one I did on this channel, I told you all it was the last one and I was not doing it again. This is the last time I will ever make a day in the life of a medical coder. And yet here we are. I actually have a queue of charts, over 1100 charts sitting in my queue right now. Whenever that we're looking at the chart, we have to look at that person's name that the first and the last name is correct because if there's any discrepancy in the name period that's just something that we can't call period it got to get kicked back we have to make sure that the date of birth matches sex of the person match whatever data service that the system is saying that we need to validate if that data service is not in the record that's also something that we cannot validate we have to invalidate that the face-to-face -face visit has to be by an acceptable provider if it's talking about like an RN did this visit or whatever, of course, that's not something that we can validate. We have to invalidate that because that's not something that we can do. To do my work, we have to use a crosswalk. You may have a condition that you're looking at. You go look at that crosswalk. You're going to see, you know, if there is a value there. If there's no value there or if you can't find the condition on a sheet period, it's like it's not an HCC condition. And all that we are worrying about is the HCC conditions. That's it. Y'all, I've come across some where it's like so many data services in one chart that I have to deal with. Some charts are just so short they're a breeze and some are complex and difficult. If there is anything that I come across in the chart that I do not understand, I will send them a question through the system. Someone will look over it and they will help me through the chart. So one thing as a medical coder, it is very important to do your due diligence before you reach out. In this profession, in this industry, in this type of career, you have to be willing to research. You have to be willing to stand on your own two feet. There's no handholding, at least not anywhere that I've worked. Well, um, well, let me stop saying that. Like when I was in training, of course, it kind of felt like handholding, but it's not like that everywhere that you go. You have to be willing to do your research. So what they love and what I always have done from day one is I will look at what's presented in the record. I would present why I'm not, you know, sure about something. I will also mention what I referenced, like any websites that I referenced, like Mayo Clinic, drugs.com or whatever then i would ask for direction and then they will come off and then they'll give me suggestions on what they think i should do if it's something that i need to kick back if it's something that i can validate that i have enough support to validate or if it's something that's in, that i should not validate they will communicate those things to me and they have been absolutely wonderful in that regard and i appreciate them for that some some of these codes you just start to know because you just see them so much some, you're going to come across codes that you like, you're like, what is that? You might have to look in your book to look it up. So there are times that I have to whip out my code book and go through the code book. I honestly do not have to do that often. Basically, I'm looking on this chart and I already, while talking to you guys, I looked and I was validating what I was looking at. But this record is only a one pager and it's illegible. I wish I could show you all what this looks like. Y'all, it looks like chicken scratch and I'm not even being funny. I promise I'm not being funny. That's exactly what it looks like. I don't even know what I'm looking at. So guess what has to happen? I have to kick this chart back. We're going to do a few. So um, I can do that. So right now, I'm going to uh, mark that. That is, says chart illegible. So that's what I did. I submitted it that the chart is illegible. I'm seeing this condition right here. I'm sure that it's an HCC condition, but I just want, want to look it up. And I don't even know why I recommended this code, but this is something right here that I don't have to kick this chart back, but the code that is suggested is not in the record. So I'm invalidating that one. I click submit. Boom. It is submitted. We're going to do one more, you guys. What I do first is I'm going to look at the day of service and the code that it is recommending. It is in the record. I see it is diagnosed. I see the support. For the medication, the clinician is talking about the condition and talking about how the condition is managed. So I have support to validate it. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go look for the signature, make sure that it's, this was completed by an acceptable provider. 
and I see that it's signed, but I'm not seeing the credentials of this provider. Oh, there it goes. Okay, I found it. The provider is an MD. Put the name of the provider here, and then I'm gonna validate the condition. So boom, it's validated. We actually got something that I got to validate. I'm not familiar with this code. Look this up on a crosswalk ID. They do not have this. And also, uh, what we do, we have a search feature as well. We're looking for a condition, we can search for it, and it'll search through the document for the actual condition. But this condition right here, I know it's not here, it's, I'm going to invalidate it. This other condition, I never heard of this, seen this code before, and I know they don't have this. Let me see, no. So I'm gonna invalidate that. The next condition, let's look at that. I know what this code is, so I'm just gonna type it because I know it by heart. It's not in the record. I'm gonna invalidate it. And I didn't see it in the record because I skimmed through it really, really quickly. This next condition, okay, hold on y'all. Just searching. It was conditioned with the combo code. They don't have the condition. And then now it's also saying, do they have this condition separate from the combo code? They don't, so I'm invalidating it. Boom, the next condition. And I'm just searching for the, let me see. Okay, so basically the condition that the system is asking is in the record, is in the record, but it's not specified correctly. The code that's being suggested is specified for a different part of the body. The other condition, um, the condition that's actually in the record is talking about a whole different part of the body. I cannot validate that, that's invalid. Let's say for example, the system is recommending that, it's asking, hey, do this person has rheumatoid arthritis, right? But then I look in the record and it says that this person has rheumatoid arthritis to like a specific region of the body that has its own code in the ICD-10-CM coding manual. Well. I cannot code a code or validate a code that is not specific enough. It has to be specified to the highest specificity. Y'all know that word always whoop me every time, um, but it has to be um, to the highest specificity. If it's not, guess what? I cannot validate that. I can't validate it. I'm almost done with it. I know they don't have this. Wait, 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 hold on. Let me let me slow my roll. Let me slow my roll. Hold on a second. Oh wow, okay, hold on, I just found it. Um, for the data service. All right, so I'm seeing the condition diagnosed, but I'm looking for more specific details because right now it just says diagnosed. It's in a sec separate section, it's diagnosed. But how is it managed? And I just came across it right now. And right now it's talking about the treatment. I got support for it. I can validate this one. So I just validated this one. Now I'm going to the next thing. Nope, it's trying to say, well the, the system is recommended that this person has this condition. But when I'm looking through the record, the record is saying that they were screened for that condition. That's the, that does not mean that they have it. And it's not even in the record saying that they actually have it. So guess what? I invalidate that. So the record is now complete. I'm going to submit it. So that one was a little bit more meaty. What is a ding? So a ding is something that I, a chart that I completed, but then the auditor comes back and say, you're not correct. They basically fail you on the chart. I would get stuff back from auditors and I'm like, no ma'am. And then I will go in and I would state my reasons of why I am correct and why they are incorrect. And most of the time, when I tell you nine times out of 10, I win all my appeals, all of them. It's rare that I lose them, okay? It is rare and I'm like, oh my gosh, those like the five years, I worked there almost five years in my old company, but I was like, oh my goodness, that place prepared me so well. I know that I'm a bad, a bad girl, okay? I'm a bad girl when it comes to this and I have great knowledge. I do my due diligence, I come with facts, not with how I feel, I come with straight facts and I win most of my pills, okay?
So this one right here is we have CKD4 and we also have DM. The code that should have been coded in the chart is E1122. Well, the auditor came back and validated E1169, which is CKD with nephropathy. Well, I came back and um, after they invalidated it, I came back and I said that the most specific code is DM with CKD. That's what should have been coded in the record, E1122, because that's more specific. Diabetes with nephropathy, it was not supported in the record, y'all. It wasn't supported in the record. So they came back and they said agree with coder. And they said that the other specified condition, the complication that the auditor was talking about, they said it's not supported for this date, for this DOS, for the data service. I won this one. And then now I'm going to go to the next one because I only had two came back for me to have to take a look at. I won this too. I know I can actually say I know my stuff and I am confident. I am very, very confident. And let me see what happened here. Okay. So it was three different conditions that I was challenged on and the auditor was not correct. This is a good one. So I had a fib and a flutter. I validated both. The auditor invalidated the atrial flutter, but left the AFib validated. So I came back and I stated AFib and A-flutter are both listed in the problem list. No excludes one for I for 8.92 and I for 8.91. They can be coded on the same chart per Mayo Clinic. A person may have episodes of both atrial flutter and atrial fibrillation. A-flutter supported with anti anticoagulant eloquence. They came back and said, agree with Coder. Both um, are supported with eloquence, blah, 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 blah. I won that appeal. A lot of times in the record, I will have diabetes diagnosed and supported. I will have PVD diagnosed and supported. And PVD and PAD, they're like interchangeable, same code, I-739. But if it's in the record, a casual relationship can be assumed for those conditions. So with DM and PVD, you're going to code E1151. A list of clinicians states that these conditions are not related. But I had the condition diagnosed, supported, uh, med support, all of that. So I'm coding E1151. So the auditor come back and say, well, the system recommended E119. You can capture E119. And then they will come back and say, and the system also recommended I739. So basically the auditor would validate E119, E11.9, and I739. And I kept getting dinged on that. Anytime you have DM and PVD, DM and PAD, both of those conditions are supported. You have it diagnosed in the record and you have the med support. You are to code E11.51, period. You're not coding E11.9. You're not coding I739. So it came to the point where I'm constantly having to challenge these coding things that I would get from auditing. But it got to the point where I had to come and say, according to with and and do to, are we to ignore that rule? Because I keep getting these things. And when I tell you all, it was more than I could count. I just kept getting deemed for it. And it came to the point where I was like, do you want me to ignore what's in the coding guidelines? Because that's a guideline. You know what I'm saying? Those things stopped happening. <laughs> you know, I came professional, at, you know, of course. But, you know, I was like, look, do you want me to ignore the very code book that we are to uphold? You have to go by this book. This is our guide. Every time I st stood firm on what I knew, I came with them with the facts. Always professional. Maybe if I was early on in my coding career, I may would have not fought for my coding the way that I do now. I know what I know and I knew that they were wrong. And no matter how many times that they said that I was wrong, I stood firm on what I knew was right, is what I'm saying. Yeah, there are some places where you work where you know that you're right, like you knew that you're right and they're saying that you're wrong and you know that what they're doing is wrong and you know whatever they're doing is, is not ethical. Get out of there. Get out of there. So now we're closer to talking about what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Some of you, you may or may not, you may be like searching, trying to figure out if you want to do medical coding around or not. Some of you, you may already have bought a course and all of that, and you may still not be feeling it. Look, I've been there. So you may be interested in something else that I'm up to right now. I want to tell you all about it. So huge announcement, huge announcement. I'm making a career pivot, making a career pivot and no gatekeeping here. I decided to pivot into 
quality assurance, software testing, to be more specific. I'm currently enrolled in a course with Careerist, their manual QA course. If you do decide to sign up, I do have a referral link in the description box below for you to get a discount. You do not have to use my referral link, but if you do, I would greatly appreciate that. Being a software tester, there is a lot of potential of making a great salary. But in my opinion, less brain work than medical coding. Try my hardest to land a position in the first quarter of 2024. I'm gonna do all I can to make sure that I make this career pivot happen for me. If you want to know more about careers and why I decided to pivot from medical coding to software testing, make sure to come back to my channel to see that upload because I am sharing that video with you all. It should come out after this video. So anyways, that's all that I have for y'all for this video. I hope that you found something useful in this video that will help you with your journey in medical coding or even to software testing. It feels really good to be back on YouTube making content for you guys. I'm so glad to be back. I was absent for a while, you guys, because um, back in like the end of 2022, my baby girl, my baby girl was diagnosed with autism and I just feel like, you know, once that happened, I had to dedicate my time to my little girl. I had to do that. And like I told you all, I did have a business, you know, Airbnb, I was doing that as well. So YouTube, I had to kind of push that back. I had to push that back. I had to push this channel back, but I'm back y'all. I'm back. I'm back and I'm better than ever. So anyways, I hope that you all enjoyed this video and I will see you all in the next one to talk about software testing. Bye y'all.